स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया welcome students uh, in this uh, week's video we are going to talk about the you know the kirchhoff's formula but for higher dimension so essentially we want to solve this equation right u t t minus laplacian of u equals to 0 so as we have seen that once you can solve the homogeneous problem you can use the you know uh, expressive formula to uh, construct a solution for the in homogeneous problem via the duhamel's principle so here this is the problem we are interested in so this is in rn cross um, zero infinity right and uh, i mean uh, we are we are just assuming that uh, u at the point x0 this is let's say g of x and u t at the point x0 let's say that is h of x clear okay so basically at the base uh, i mean time t equals to 0 we are assuming that u uh, is g and u with respect to t is h now what is our aim our aim is to find an explicit you know find an explicit formula explicit formula formula no okay uh, u in terms of in terms of of g and h right so this is one now as uh, i mean uh, if uh, let let us just quickly recall just once uh, uh, that uh, what are the formulas that we have obtained till now yes so the first formula which we have often so we we have we saw that if we really want to do this thing you can't just you know go about it uh, in a straight forward way what we need to do is first of all find a formula for n equals to 3 and then with the help of the method of descent so for what we did up till now is this so let's let's put a small revision in here revision okay so for n equals to 1 what we did is we derived the d'alembert's formula right alembert's formula okay okay so for n equals to 1 so the, the n equals to 1 essentially what is the equation then u t t minus u x x equals to 0 that's the equation right and we have uh, d alembert's formula which gives you an explicit uh, formula for u in terms of g and h right so for n equals to 2 what is it uh, it is called the Uh, i mean uh, sorry uh, i mean okay n equals to 2 we did that but uh, initial so we started for let, let us first write it down n equals to 3 yes we had the formula which we called as the kirchhoff's formula kirchhoff's formula right uh, i am not writing all that because you guys i mean it's already done yes and um, for n equals to 2 uh, with the help of kirchhoff's formula so and of course the number from okay so uh, here's the deal you see first of all for n equals to 1 we prove the de alembert formula right yeah i mean you can do it in two methods we did it with the help of two different methods right one is the method of characteristic and another one is the method of you know um, uh, uh, canonical form okay so once you form have the de alembert formula for n equals to 1 you use that formula to construct a new form um, i mean equation you know you remember that euler poiseau uh, darby equation and with that um, formulation we formulated the kirchhoff formula for n equals to 3 right now from there with the help of method of descent we actually got uh, for n equals to 2 so it is called the poiseau formula right poiseau formula okay so this is via method of descent method of descent Okay, uh, I am 
this center i am always getting this wrong okay so is it clear what did we do n equals to first of all this is the first step we took n equals to 1 this is the second step we took n equals to 3 and so from here to here we went n equals to 1 to 2 and uh, 1 to 3 and then we went to uh, from the method of descent we went to 3 here what we today we what we want to do is i do we want to do it for a general n okay uh, for general n general n in n clear okay now we are going to see uh, the idea is this we are going to use the same sort of idea what we did here okay for well, cursors and positive formula the same side sort of thing we are going to do just in a you know in a context of a general n yes so the formulas are going to get a little bit you know more uh, dark if you want yes i mean uh, you know they are more complicated uh, let, let's put it like that yes and um, and th that's all i mean they're just a bit complicated but the ideas hold exact same sort of ideas yeah no nothing much okay so let's do that so uh, for first thing first i'm going to write down some identities okay so first of all uh, you you guys know the deal first uh, first thing first we have to find out the solution solution for n odd okay n odd n odd i mean and here um, uh, so n is equal to 3 5 so essentially n is greater than equal 3 of course okay n equals to 3 5 7 whatever yeah n odd yeah? uh, i mean yeah, um, if you want you can just take it to be 2k plus 1 okay and k is greater than equal to 1 you can think of it like this yes okay and for that let me write down some uh, inequalities i mean uh, identities sorry so some identities identity okay so say these are some useful identities which are we are going to use so let you know phi from r to r so basically i am looking for a uh, ck plus one function from r to r okay and then for k equals to one two it goes on like this the these particular things hold number one d2 dr2 okay of this particular thing see these are some identities this has nothing to do with any pd or anything yeah for any phi which is in ck plus one so k can be one two whatever yes so you take uh, I mean, for example you take a c in rn let's say yeah r5 r r8 so i mean you can you can have this formula that's what i'm trying to say okay one by r uh, ddr of uh power k minus one so basically this this multiplied k minus one times okay to power r to the power 2k minus one yeah i, I mean uh, it uh, it is not like it is coming from heavens okay uh, this has some uh, i mean when we do the calculations you will see that we need this sort of things huh? that is why we are just doing it uh you know beforehand so as to avoid any you know complicated um, complication during our uh endeavor okay so here uh, this is uh, the formula which uh, let me write it down del phi del r acting at r clear so uh, essentially what am i saying is uh, you have r power 2k minus 1 times phi of r that if you take the action of this particular thing i mean 1 by r del del r you take the k minus 1 times okay and you take uh, i mean you evaluate it on this r2 power 2 minus k minus 1 phi of r and then you take the d2 ddr2 of that whole thing that will be 1 by r ddr whole power k r2 power 2k t phi dr whole power r okay yes so please remember this thing and let me make it very clear in the examinations or in any other place i mean in near future also even if you are going for a research uh, also do not worry no one is going to ask you this formula or i mean if you of course in research if you need uh, this something like this you can always consult your book okay so no need of remembering all these formulas okay okay no one in their right mind is going to ask you to you know um, i mean you realize this i mean of course you can uh, i mean you should prove it yeah i mean all of this can be proved by induction what i am trying to say is i mean this is not a very good idea to put it in, in some exam or something yes i mean it, it does not uh, serve any purpose that's what i'm trying to say 
okay so uh, i mean of course this is uh, never a part of any exam this is just some identities which we use to get whatever we want uh, i mean uh, to get the course of so the pozo formula for higher dimensions yes okay so uh, now another the other identity which we have is 1 by r ddr power k minus 1 k minus 1 r power 2k minus 1 phi of r okay this is equals to summation k equals j equals to 0 2k minus 1 okay uh, beta kj okay and r power j plus 1 d j phi by d r j of r clear okay here this beta kj is they are constants okay beta kj okay so this is for j equals to 0 1 k minus 1 they are constants are constants are constants independent of phi okay so again let me emphasize this i mean this may look you know that uh, what crazy things are this this looks crazy let's be very honest here okay but i mean these are just some uh, identities results which we are going to use in our uh, proof that's all yes i mean there is nothing special about it just some calculations which you can i mean if you want yes i am not emphasizing that you do that but because i mean uh, these are true i mean let's just put it that way yeah but if you want to be rigorous what i want you to do is you can check using induction so you can use induction and check these formulas okay number three is this that what are the uh, beta k uh, g zero okay zero with respect for so basically for j j equals zero so this is uh, one three five dot 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 two k minus one clear okay so these are the three identities again i am emphasizing it again and again this will never be asked in any sane examination okay and sane is here what i meant is in, in any you know real uh, examination they won't ask you to prove this sort of identity i mean there is no point of doing this thing yet yeah? this is just for our um, use okay now let's look at the proof yes let's look at the proof of the theorem so uh, essentially again as i told you we are going to do the exact same thing what we did in the earlier cases okay in uh, so uh, the notations which i'm going to use is you see so let small u okay small u of xt clear be the solution solution of one okay so we are assuming that is, is that clear i mean i am assuming that small u see this is our one right i am assuming that there is a solution now i want to find out if uh, i mean what is the uh, you know um, the exact explicit f f uh, you know how do i put it formula for that yes so let uh, so let u be the solution of one yes and u is in what is it c k plus one so i'm assuming this thing is rn cross zero infinity okay so i am assuming our small u is at least k plus one times continuously differentiable okay now you see what am i doing is i am going to write down new functions okay you, you remember uh, we defined now and uh, so recall recall we have defined a capital u right if you if you remember we re re recall okay that for x in rn t positive and r positive define define capital u of x r comma t this is given by the average of del v x r u of y t d s y clear okay so essentially this is the, that's the average of u over the sphere del v x r yes 
I mean, uh, we have looked at this la last week, right? And of course, capital U, I mean, um, you do realize that capital U is definitely in CK plus 1. It's in fact in CK plus 2. Okay. But uh, I mean, of course, in, with respect to um, R and T, yeah, and capital U, you can see that it is CK plus 1 um, with respect to R and T, right? Yes. So that is always there. Okay, now what we do is we write, we write, you know, in one dimensional cases, oh, sorry, sorry, not for one dimension, for k equals to one, so essentially n equals to three case, okay, u tilde of rt, this was defined as ru, if you remember, yes, here I am defining it to be one by r, del del r whole power k minus one, okay r power 2k minus 1 u of x r t clear so here you see if you put k equals to 1 you can see that it is essentially r u r capital u yeah r capital u huh? and uh, of course this is not there yes so uh, this is just an higher dimension and analog of whatever we did in the last uh, week okay and of course what is g tilde of r g tilde of r is defined by 1 by r del del r whole power k minus 1 r to the power 2k minus 1 and the capital g of x r clear okay so again uh, this is exactly the same thing just in a higher dimension and analog okay for k equals to 1 you realize that it is basically r times g again h tilde of r also similarly you can define a exactly the same sort of thing 1 by r del del r whole power k minus 1 r to the power 2k minus 1 h of x comma r clear okay so exactly the same thing here r of course is positive and t is greater than or equal to 0 that is clear. yes okay now you 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 can see that u tilde so it's a small note yeah i'm not writing it down u tilde of r0 that is going to be g tilde of r okay and similarly u tilde um, t u tilde with respect to t the derivative of u tilde with respect to t at the point r0 is going to be h tilde okay so th that is always there huh? I, I mean i'm not writing all that okay now what did we do you remember first of all what did we do uh, we took this small u we assume that there is a small u and we can define this capital u like this which is the average over the spheres average of small u over the space right now what we did is we defined u tilde g tilde and h tilde so essentially we defined u tilde uh, as r times capital u yes and we showed that u tilde uh, you know satisfies uh, if you remember uh, that particular one dimensional wave equation right okay so let me write it down uh, here also something similar happens okay i mean maybe i can do it in the next page so u tilde this is the first lemma you can say u tilde solve the one dimensional wave equation right so u tilde of tt minus u tilde of rr is equals to 0 in r plus cross 0 infinity clear again what are we doing here see this is i mean we are not doing anything special it's just some change of variables right we are constructing functions in such a way that we can reduce everything to one dimensional use our dlmbers formula and then you can have your explicit thing right that's what we are doing that's all okay again u tilde is essentially g that's what uh, we just discussed ut tilde equals to h okay uh, i really do not have to uh, sorry g tilde and h tilde i did not have to i mean it, that's easily seen right okay this is on t equals to 0 right r plus cross t equals to c clear and u tilde okay that is equals to 0 on r equals to 0 cross 
zero infinity. I hope that is clear, right? When you take r equals to zero, you can check that utilla is definitely going to be zero. So that's, uh, I mean, that's the easy observations. Okay, so this can be easily observed. The at least these two. Okay, I need to check whether this is true or not. I mean, last time we have seen that this is true, but uh, here we have a special, you know, a little complicated one. So let's just take that part. Okay, so first thing first, proof. So essentially, of course, our R is positive. I mean, there is nothing uh, we have always assumed. Uh, you see, R is positive assumed, right? So because you know we are defining uh, if R is zero, I mean, there's nothing is basically zero, right? Okay. So at R equals to zero, we have U, capital U is zero. So yeah, but so R is always positive. We are just assuming that. So proof. You see, U tilde of R R. This one I need to calculate. It is. Uh, del 2 del r square clear of 1 by r del del r of k minus 1 r power 2k minus 1 capital u right right what am i doing i am not doing anything except i am just writing it down see u tilde what is u tilde 1 by it, this is u tilde right see let me let me put it this way what is u tilde 1 by r del del r whole power k minus 1 r to the power k minus 2k minus 1 u this one clear i am taking twice derivative here r r u tilde with respect to um, i mean uh, del 2 u tilde del r square right okay so that is why del square del r square of u tilde clear Th that is what i am just writing it down now you see this particular thing if you use this lemma here that crazy looking lemma this lemma okay you see d2 dr2 of this particular thing yeah this is what i wrote that is 1 by r ddr whole power k r to the power 2k d phi dr right okay so i'll just write it down here so that will look like 1 by r del del r of k okay r power 2k capital u r Clear? Yes. See, essentially, this is the exact same thing. Del 2, del R2 of this particular U tilde, okay, is 1 by R this. This is what? You see? D2, D R2 of this is U tilde, right? That is equals to, so uh, this is for any phi. So, I can just uh, substitute phi with capital U here in our case. And it is 1 by R del del R whole power k R to the power 2k d phi dr. You see? 1 by R del del R whole power k R to the power 2k you are right okay so now you see this is 1 by r del del r whole power k minus 1 and then you have r power 2k minus 1 okay r power 2k minus 1 and u r r i'm just uh, you know taking the derivative i mean one you know what i'm doing here is this so this is del del r whole power k minus 1 and then 1 by r del del r. So, I am just breaking one of them and making it to act on this particular r power 2k u r. Clear? So, it becomes r to the power 2k minus 1 u r r plus 2k r 2k minus 2 u r. Clear? Yes? That is what I am getting. Now, that is going to be 1 by r del del r whole power k minus 1 r to the power 2k minus 1 i can just take it out it becomes capital u r r plus n minus 1 by r capital u r okay this is for n equals to 2k plus 1 okay i can just write it down right i mean in this k you, you just replace 2k with n minus 1 by r right yes why do i need to replace this thing of course i mean uh, we are assuming that this is for the odd case yeah you remember n is 2k plus 1 okay so um, uh, we assume this thing somewhere no uh, in the initial case i uh, yeah i wrote it here yeah? n equals to 2k plus 1 so basically for 3 5 7 all that sort of thing yes okay so that is there so um, uh, you just replace 2k with this thing and you have this now this is our familiar equation right you remember this one small u what does small u do if you remember small u since 
सॉरी कैपिटल यू नॉट स्मॉल यू कैपिटल यू सैटिस्फाइज सैटिस्फाइज द ऑयलर पॉजो डार्बू इक्वेशन ओके वन हैज वन है दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग इज इक्व टू वन बाई आर डेल डेल आर होल पावर के माइनस वन आर टू दी पावर टू के माइनस वन एंड दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग इज यू टी टी राइट यू रिमेम्बर दिस ऑयल एड पॉजो डार्क यू क्वेश्चन इज यू टी टी माइनस यू आर आर प्लस माइनस एन माइनस वन बाई आर यू आर दैट इज गोइंग टू बी जीरो इन द इन द डोमेन राइट इन साइड द डोमेन सो बेसिकली दिस इज इक्वल टू यू टी टी आई एम जस्ट रिप्लेसिंग दिस थिंग नाउ वॉट इज दिस I mean, if you if you just look at this formula, this is nothing but u t t tilde, right? I mean, u tilde is essentially this, right? And if you take the twice derivative t t with respect to t t, then it, it becomes this. I mean, there is nothing uh, special about it, right? I mean, it's just a definition. You can use the definition and just write it down. Okay? Yeah? So, uh, what uh, does u tilde do? U tilde. So also therefore u tilde. Let me put it here. U tilde solves the one d heat equation, right? One d. Sorry, not heat wave equation. Wave equation. Clear? It solves the one dimensional wave equation. Okay. Now. Uh, again, as I told you, these two things you can easily check. I mean, there is nothing special hidden going on here. So you guys please check this part, uh, and you are done. Okay. So now what do we have is this. See, uh, this particular lemma. Actually, if you have something like this, then you can write u tilde in terms of g tilde and h tilde, right? By the elements. You remember that the half space we did that reflection thing, yes? Okay. So we'll do the exact same thing here. Okay. So. therefore for zero less than r less than t okay uh, u tilde of rt please remember this thing we are not doing it in the whole so essentially this is defined here this is this is defined here right the because r is positive this is r this is t r is positive okay so now we are taking that uh, we did that reflection thing right if you remember the dot reflection thing and we calculated it in the whole domain and used the lmbs right and from there we calculated two different formulas i'm just using that uh, particular thing so r is between 0 and t u tilde of t it will look like half g tilde of r plus t minus g tilde of t minus r Okay, plus half t minus r to t plus r h tilde of y dy. Clear? This is by d l inverse, right? D l inverse. Okay. Now, uh, of course, this holds for any r in r and t positive. Yes, that's that's it. Yeah, and also. You see, u tilde, u of x t, u of x t. If you remember, that is essentially limit r tends to zero, capital U of x r t. Yeah, if you remember, you see, uh, that's the average, right? Capital U, uh, where is the cap? Uh, yeah, this is the capital U, right? Now, if you take r tends to zero, we we have seen this. I think this is uh, a part of assignment in the Laplacian uh, assignment uh, that some some week. Yeah, I don't remember exactly, but uh, I mean, uh, in one of the assignment problems, you have seen that limit r tends to zero, uh, capital U. If you take that, will go to uh, this uh, small u of Uh, the center here x t right yeah t is fixed i mean for any t that happens so so essentially this is true okay now um now what we are going to do is you see uh, u tilde of r t then yeah u tilde of r t that is essentially 1 by r del del r of k minus 1 okay R to the power 2k minus 1 capital U of x R comma t clear okay this 
I am now what I am going to for here I am going to use this particular uh, the second part the second part 1 by r del del r whole power k minus 1 okay r to the power 2k minus 1 phi of r is this sum okay this uh, a little you know crazy looking sum so let's just write that sum uh, here okay so this is nothing but just the calculation part yeah j equals to 0 to k minus 1 okay b k j r to the power j plus 1 okay del j del r j of capital u x r comma t clear so that's your uh, i mean this is from that lemma right this this is from this identity maybe uh, let me write it like this i1 i2 i3 okay this is from identity so i am taking i2 here so from i2 i2 clear from i2 now what happens is once you have something like this uh, i need to do some more calculations huh? so uh, let me bear uh, i mean please bear with me here so here this if i want to write it down okay and uh, this is basically beta k 0 r u okay so that is uh, uh, if you want to write it down this is uh, u sorry this is capital u capital u of r x r t plus b k 1 r square capital u r x r t plus and this goes on right it becomes b k and j equals to k minus 1 k minus 1 r power k and you have u r k minus 1 right so it is del k minus 1 by del r k minus 1 so k minus 1 time derivative okay capital u of x r comma t okay so that is your u tail lights a little big expression i just broke it up and uh, i wrote it like that okay so now look at this thing p k 0 r u of x comma r t yeah this expression this can be written as u tilde of r t minus this whole thing yes i i don't know if i want to write it down let's say this particular thing yeah let us call it as uh, some pi okay capital pi i'm not writing that huh? i mean the, the exact same thing so basically i am just writing this thing equals to u tilde minus of pi here i just don't want to write it that's why i'm not writing okay and um, now uh, so that will imply if, if this is true that will imply that uh, u capital u of x r comma t this is equals to now i want to i mean you know divide it out by b k 0 r okay so if i divide it out you be it becomes u uh, u tilde r t okay by um, pi beta k 0 r okay i have to be very careful here because there are lots of calculations going on okay uh, one sec let 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 me just clarify everything is uh, minus this particular thing beta k1 uh, by beta k0 r u capital u capital u r okay mm, x r t okay and minus it goes on minus beta k k minus 1 by beta 0 k r power k 
के माइनस वन आर पावर के एंड बाई आर आर पावर के माइनस वन कैपिटल यू ऑफ एक्स आर ओके सो दिस इज देयर नाउ यू सी आई मीन इफ आई वांट टू राइट इफ आई वांट टू फाइंड व्हाट इज स्मॉल यू ऑफ एक्स एक्स टी व्हाट इज स्मॉल यू ऑफ एक्स टी यू सी स्मॉल यू ऑफ एक्स टी इज लिमिट capital u as r tends to 0 so basically i have to take limit r tends to 0 small r tends to 0 okay of this particular thing right then i will get small u right so let's just do that so u of xt okay is limit r tends to 0 okay this uh, um, this this expression this expression okay limit r tends to 0 both sides the left hand side is this converges to uh, u of xt as r tends to 0 and i just have to find out where this thing converges as r tends to 0 that's the question clear okay so um, let's just do that part so first thing first so this is 1 by beta k0 this is always there okay and g tilde of t plus r i'm just using that formula okay minus g tilde of t minus r by uh, 2 r clear plus 1 by okay so okay uh, let me again uh, tell you what is happening as limit r tends to 0 you do realize that all of this is gone you know because this uh, this things you r r power k minus 1 these terms are there these that are constant those are constants right okay so as r tends to 0 uh, definitely this, this i mean or uh, these expressions uh, remaining expressions are all gone you are only left out with this particular thing right as r tends to 0 okay so limit r tends to 0 u tilde by b not b not k r is equals to small u right so that's what i'm just writing okay so now um, u tilde of r t is this um, i mean u tilde of where is it u tilde of r t is this formula where is it you see this ld alembers formula right i'm just using that thing plus 1 by 2 r sorry it is a bit complicated but i mean that's life what can you do okay so this is a tilde of y ty right now this is equals to 1 by beta 0 k okay and uh, of course you take r tends to 0 of this thing what happens this becomes g prime of t of course tilde is there okay uh, th th that's just the definition yes that's just the definition of um, the derivative plus h tilde of t clear Plus h tilde of t. You remember limit r tends to zero. The average of h tilde uh, on this. I mean, the, if you take the uh, average of h tilde, that converges to uh, h of t, right? The center. Okay. So this is how we are getting, and this is just the definition of derivative. Okay. So we have this. So therefore, therefore, for n equals to two k plus one. Okay. n equals to 2k plus 1 uh, the representation formula which you are getting is this so let me write it down okay this is a little um, i mean you know big but i mean that's the way it is this is del del t of 1 by t del del t okay of n minus 3 by 2 okay t to the power n minus 2 the average of del b x t g d s okay plus 1 by t del del t of n minus 3 by 2 t to the power n minus 2 integral over del b x t h d s okay so this is when n is odd and gamma n is essentially 1 3 5 the the, the 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 you know product uh, till n minus 2 okay 
x is in Rn and t positive. Clear? So, um, what did we get? You see, u of x t is basically this thing. This b0 k. How is this gamma n coming? You see, what is b0 k? b0 k, where is it? Mm, eh, you see, b0 k is 1, 3, 5 up to 2 k minus 1. So, that is what gamma n is here. Yeah? That is what, where is it? Yeah, that is what gamma n is. Yeah, that's what I am just writing. And you, you, here, you know, g tilde and h tilde, we already know, right? g tilde, uh, we have defined it to be, um, you know, g tilde prime. Where is it? Uh, see, uh, we define g tilde somewhere, no? Yes, g tilde is defined by this. Okay, 1 by r del del r k minus 1 of this that the with respect to t so del del t of this particular thing uh, and again h del is given by this I am just doing nothing but just putting everything together okay and then I am using the definition of capital U so I get everything in terms of small g and small h and this is the formula okay so let me emphasize this thing uh, at least um, I myself in any of my courses on examinations, I am never going to ask you to remember this formula. Okay, this is just for your know, information so that you know that there is an explicit formula which looks like this. Of course, whenever you need it, let's say in practical purposes, you can always consult your book. Okay, the purpose of doing this formula is basically to let you know that how this is derived. Okay, there is nothing special about it. Once you know how to do it for n equals to 1, you go from there to n equals to 3 and then you use the method of descent, Hadamard's method actually, okay, to go to n equals to 2. And here we are not doing anything but generalizing this fact. Okay, generalizing this fact. How are you generalizing it? So we are generalizing it in this way. We are just defining our new u tilde and h tilde and g tilde like this and with this generalization we are exactly using the same sort of idea to prove uh, what we want okay the same idea so you the important thing is the last week whatever the idea we have used this idea okay once you understand it you can just replicate the same thing but of course you have to have uh, you know the specific that particular form of uh, you know a, a capital u tilde h tilde and g tilde fine now you have this formula now what is the guarantee that this is the solution yeah that is one thing yes what is the guarantee so for that the existence theorem existence theorem for wave equation equation uh, in odd dimensions in odd dimensions okay so basically we want to show that the formula which you obtained let's say let's call this as star this formula huh? uh, this formula which you we have obtained let's call this formula as star we want to show that this formula is actually valid okay so uh, the theorem says that as you n is odd integer odd integer greater than equal 3 okay and g is in cm plus 1 rn cm plus 1 rn let's just assume that okay h is in cm rn okay See, uh, why we need a little uh, more smoothness in G because we want that, you know, G prime is involved here, you see, uh, you know, capital G prime and all this. So, G has a derivative kind of thing involved. H does not have any derivative involved in the LM. So, that is why we always need a more, uh, you know, more smoothness on G yes, with respect to and uh, I mean, in comparison to H. For M equals to n plus 1 by 2 clear now define define u by star okay then then the following is true u the capital the, the small u which you are going to get is in c2 of 
आर एन क्रॉस जीरो इन्फिनिटी ओके सो प्लीज रियलाइज दिस थिंग दिस यू नो द रेगुलरिटी ऑन जी एंड एच इज नॉट टू गेट मोर रेगुलर यू बट दिस इज जस्ट टू कॉम्पेन्सेट द डायमेंशंस ओके सो यू इज इन सी टू नंबर टू is of course u satisfies the wave equation so this theorem guarantees that the solution which you are getting with start this solution that is actually the original solution of the wave equation the explicit solution in rn cross zero infinity okay and c limit xt going to x not zero, x is in R n, t positive, okay, u of x t, that is g at x not, clear? So basically, uh, what I am saying is, uh, u is such that it satisfies the boundary uh, condition. Limit x t going to x not zero okay u t of x t is h of x naught now i will actually ask you to do this please yes uh, verify the c part at least the c part huh uh, i mean it's not very difficult to see that uh, i mean you just have to verify that that limit goes to g and this limit goes to h that's all okay so please do that part yourself okay i'm not going to do that part and of course this is also i mean not a very difficult thing to do okay the second part the first thing first is, is uh, we have to uh, check uh, but uh, i mean uh, let's see i mean uh, what we can do so basically uh, the c part you have to do it yourself okay please check this part okay so let's first of all find that you whether u is c2 or not and whether this satisfies this equation see if u is c2 if let's say u satisfies this equation u t t minus laplacian of u equals to zero i mean of course that second derivative exists yeah and uh, i mean we have to just show that they are continuous okay so let's do that so proof Now we are starting out with first dating that first let first let g is identically equals to zero. Okay, so what is u of x t? This is just to make our life simpler. Okay, one by gamma n. See if g is zero, this part is gone. That part is gone, right? So uh, we are only left out with this. Okay, so one by gamma n, one by t, del del t of n minus three by two, t power n minus two, the average of h, right? Okay, so that let us call that is, I mean, we call this we call this average as h, right? Capital H. Okay, so this is one by t, del del t, okay, of n minus 3 by 2 okay and t power n minus 2 capital h of x comma t yes this is what we defined in the earlier weeks if you remember yes so that is always there and then then from uh I don't know what did I write that lemma? Okay, lemma two one. Uh, where is the lemma? Yeah, lemma one two. Sorry, one two. Okay, uh, so this lemma one two from lemma one two. Okay, what we have is uh, u t t. If you now write what is u t t, that is what what is one by gamma n. Okay. One by t del del t of n minus three by two, okay, and then it is basically t power n minus one h t of x comma t, okay. This is I am using the lemma two here. U if it is something like this, u t t is basically del square del t square of whole this whole thing, okay. See, 
uh, um, I mean, let let us look at uh, the first expression. You see, you just replace it by uh, t here. Okay, if you just look at uh, the whole expression, it is del two del t square one by t del del t whole power k minus one t power uh, two k two uh, k minus one. Okay. Mm, uh, h here that is 1 by r del del r whole power k uh, so here it will be r is t essentially 1 by t del del t of uh, k r power 2k del phi del t okay that is what i wrote here here i i just replaced r by t here so you see that is what it is written here okay so please don't get confused this is exactly the same thing i am just replacing r by t okay so that is there and now once you have this okay so you remember that uh, what is capital h of t of x if you remember we when we did that you know mean value property uh, in here also we calculated uh, in the first uh, week we calculated this thing h of t is t by n the average of bxt laplacian of h dy okay i hope you remember this thing so this calculation if you forget it please do it yourself because this is from the mean value theorem from calculation of laplace equations yeah we did this thing you remember we first of all changed the variable i mean replaced uh, this uh, with a b01 ball right with the change of variable then calculated the derivative with respect to t okay then again came back and um, we had this formula okay if you remember this thing it is fine if you don't remember this thing please do this calculation you will get to do i mean you use this sort of calculation everywhere okay so this is why we are using again again okay we see that uh, h of t is there okay so also let let's put it like this so u h u of t t is this and h of t is given by this yeah this i am not proving this thing so this is from uh, i mean i did it twice actually once in the first uh, part of wave equation and uh, once in the very beginning of Laplace equation the same calculation was done so I'm just uh, since I'm skipping this yes so once you have all that now I am just uh, putting all of this together see a utt is basically this particular things times ht ht is given by this so I will just replace this thing so therefore utt is 1 by n alpha n gamma n 1 by t del del t of n minus 1 by 2 okay integral bxt laplacian of h dy okay so that will actually give us 1 by n alpha n r power n okay 1 by t del del t of i'm taking one derivative here okay so n minus 3 by 2 okay 1 by t one derivative so i'm just breaking one uh, from here okay it will be del b x t laplacian of h ds okay i hope you remember the formulas which i uh, taught you last uh, i mean in uh, last few classes what is the derivative del del t of this particular thing if you remember del del t of integral bxt laplacian h i mean you don't have to have laplacian of h this is uh, this can be any summable phi so that is equals to del bxt phi Right? with respect to ds of course the surface uh, uh, i mean integral and this is dx okay so that is there yeah if you remember this formula we did this few days back also we did this formula yes okay i'm just using that formula so um, uh, you know one by t del del t i'm breaking it up and one part uh, i'm just using this is one by t del del t of integral over the boundary is the integral over the ball that is what i'm just writing it down here okay fine now again again what happens when laplacian of capital h x t i mean uh, if i calculate it so basically that is laplacian of integral del b 0 t h of x plus y okay d s y 
clear this this delta is with respect to x okay this delta is with respect to x okay so what am i doing capital h is if you remember that's the average of small h right that the average of small h now i am just writing it down and again taking you know a change of variable and shifting the origin to uh, center to the origin that's all i'm not doing anything else just that yeah so capital h is the average of small h yes over the sphere del b uh, with radius t now i am just replacing you know uh, the center from x to 0 that's all yeah so the change of variable so this is essentially if you write it down that is del b x t laplacian of h okay i can just take this inside right okay because this integral is with respect to t okay uh, 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 sorry uh, with respect to uh, y okay so I, uh, this is with respect to x if you if you yeah the delta is with respect to x this integral is with respect to y i'm doing huh? x is uh, I, I just changed the variable so you see this del b initially was at the center x and time t I just change the center to origin. Okay, so delta x of this particular thing. So that that is why I can take the uh, you know this uh, derivative, the twice derivative with respect to x inside. Yeah, delta x inside. So it becomes this. Yes. Clear. Now, of course, therefore, you can see that therefore. u of tt okay u of tt equals to laplacian of u in rn cross 0 infinity right so if you have something like this you, you can see that essentially you can see that u tt u tt is our this thing right and laplacian of u if you calculate then what do you get laplacian of u is essentially uh, i mean your utt yeah so that is what i just proved it yeah <laughs> this, that's what we just proved that utt equals to laplacian of u that's what yeah so i hope that is clear because you see what um, why is okay let, let me explain to you why how this is coming Mm. utt is essentially uh, i mean you have 1 by n alpha and r power or uh, n mm, r to the power n 1 by t del del t of n minus 3 by 2 okay and uh, of course you have this particular thing right uh, sorry this is not, not r to the power n this is gamma n here yeah? i forgot I, I, this is just by reflex i wrote it this gamma n okay and um, you know this part uh, integral of laplacian h okay this uh, now if you calculate what is laplacian of capital h that you can see that this is basically this laplacian of small h which is this term this term right so basically this particular term here if you replace it by capital h so utt is this whole thing utt is this whole thing 1 by t times capital h okay now you see what is u u is particularly this thing if you take laplacian with respect to x of u then that laplacian will go inside because this is with respect to t this is with respect to t it won't change it will go inside and it become laplacian of capital a 1 by gamma n 1 by t del del t of n minus 3 by 2 all of this t to the power n minus 2 laplacian of capital h you see that is that is what you are going to get okay Mm, 1 by t del del t 1 minus n minus 3 by 2 1 by t laplacian of capital h okay so that is why utt first to laplacian of u okay so that is there now of course uh, you know, i mean similarly one can show that it works for if h is equivalent to 0 okay so initially i took g equal equivalent to 0 I sh and i'm showing that utt minus laplacian u equals to 0 again you can do it in the same way by showing that h if it is equivalent to 0 then the same thing happens yes now how do you show that when both u and uh, g and h are non-zero then this is true okay think about it 
C, uh, you can break this equation into two parts. One part is with G equals to 0, H non 0. Another part is G non 0, H 0. If you add those two up by the uh, superposition principle, okay, then you get uh, that uh, this this particular, uh, I mean, U T T minus Laplacian U is going to be 0, okay. So, I, I hope that is clear, okay. So, and of course, uh, this I asked you to do it yourself. So, once you do it yourself, it will become clear. So, I think uh, we are going to end this video here and uh, it is more or less clear what we were trying to do. So, in odd dimensions, uh, this is the formula which we uh, really need. This is our Karshoff formula for n greater than equal uh, 3 odd, okay, n odd greater than equal 3 Karshoff formula and this formula actually solves our wave equation here. Yeah? So, let us end it here.